Hello, and welcome to Junior Marine Biology. My name is Lawrence, and I'll be your host, guiding you through each and every week. Now this week, we'll be exploring manta rays with Nicole from Manta Trust. But before we start with that, let's have a look at some of the amazing science and work that you all did and sent in to us. Wow, all that was truly amazing. Please do continue to send us your work. Even if you start at week one, we'd love to see all of the things that you do. Now, let's get started with our lesson. Today, we'll be talking to Nicole from Manta Trust to learn all about manta rays. But Nicole, what are manta rays? Aren't they just really big stingrays? Hi everybody, my name is Nicole and I work with the Maldivian Manta Ray Project at Six Senses Lamu. I'm here to tell you all about the gentle giants, my favorite animal, the manta ray. That was a great question, Lawrence, and manta rays are related to other sharks and rays, but they are more than just giant stingrays. Let's look at the tree of life and see where they fall in. They are part of the animal kingdom, the chordata phylum, the chondrichthys class, and part of the elasmobranchi subclass, which are cartilaginous fish and include sharks and stingrays. Mantas belong to the Myliobatiforms order, the Mobulidae family, and the Mobula genus. This genus has 10 species, two of which are manta rays, Mobula alfredi and Mobula barostris the reef and oceanic manta rays. So let's talk about the biology of manta rays and some of the things that make them a little bit different than stingrays. Normally when we talk about biology with humans, we go from head to toe. Well, with the manta ray, we're gonna go from fin to tail. Starting at the front of a manta ray, we have their cephalic fins. These fins can be rolled and unrolled and are used for feeding. Unlike stingrays who eat with a mouth from below, manta rays have their mouth at the front. Manta rays are filter feeders and eat only plankton, the tiniest microscopic food out there in the ocean. Because of their large size, they have to eat a lot of plankton. With the paddle-like cephalic fins at the front, they can create funnels in the water to help scoop up all of that plankton. Just next to the side of their head, you can find their eyes. Some people mistakenly think their eyes are at the end of their cephalic fins. Manta rays can see really well from the sides, but they can also see really well from below. So if you're ever out there swimming with a manta ray and they flip over and show you their belly, they might just be giving you a really good look. Behind their eyes, you'll find their brain. Of all fish species, manta rays have the largest brains. Because they're a difficult species to research, we don't quite know how smart they really are. This brings us to the back of a manta ray or their dorsal surface. You might have heard of a dolphin as having a dorsal fin on their back. So this is an easy one to remember. From the dorsal side of a manta ray, you can tell which species it is, if it's a reef manta ray or an oceanic manta ray. Reef manta rays have a Y on their back, and oceanic manta rays have a T on their back. These patterns are a whitish gray color on a black back. The opposite side of dorsal is ventral, and on the ventral side of a manta ray is where you'll find its gill slits, five on each side to be exact. Like all other fish species, manta rays have gills to breathe. Manta rays are ram ventilators, meaning they must constantly swim forward to run water over their gills. Oftentimes, stingrays can be found resting in lagoons or sitting in the sand, but manta rays can't do this. They can't pump water over their gills. So if you see a ray sitting in the sand, it's definitely not a manta ray. Most manta rays are white with black spots on their ventral side, but there are a few exceptions to this. Just like human fingerprints, the ventral side of a manta ray's unique patterns can be used to identify different individuals. 
As a manta ray gets older, they'll grow, but the spots stay exactly the same. So as researchers, these spots are very important. Within the main part of their body, you'll find all of their important organs, but we can't forget about their pectoral fins. When we measure a manta ray, we talk about their size from wingtip to wingtip. So this is from one end of the pectoral fins to the other end of the pectoral fins. The wings are the pectoral fins that they use for swimming. Reef manta rays are born with a wingspan of 1.5 to 2 meters. That's probably bigger than most of you. They can grow as large as 4.5 meters across, and larger oceanic mantas can grow to almost 7 meters across. Most of the reef manta rays in Lamu are a bit smaller, between 3 and 3.5 three and meters, but they're still huge. At the very back of a manta ray, you'll find its tail. Some people think that manta rays are dangerous with a stinger or barb in their tail, but these gentle giants have no defense mechanisms at all and definitely no stinger in their tail. Since manta rays can't see directly behind them, their tail can help let them know if something is sneaking up on them and alerts them to swim away or turn around and see what's behind them. Wow, I had no idea how big manta rays could be. Let's have a look at how big 3.5 meters actually is. Nicole and I are drawing one of the Lamu mantas in the sand here, Umedu, 3.5 meters wide. And here we are laying down next to it, taking a photo with the drone. Now it's your turn. How many of you would be needed to be the same size as one of the reef or oceanic manta rays? Or try using some objects or items around your house, such as pencils or spoons, to figure out how many you would need to make it the size of a manta ray.